scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You must come to God and have an encounter that produces convictions. If we do not contend for genuine encounters, this generation may not have the power and the stamina to to stand the reality of the times that we are in. Are we together? The days that we are in, the revival, the awakening that is sweeping across the nation will not only require people of zeal, it will require people of encounter. Are we blessed? And by the grace of God and by the privilege of the election of grace, I am a student of the move of God. I have studied the moves of God. I have studied men and women who have had encounters with God and the validity of their encounters were demonstrated in their lifetime. I've had the privilege of meeting a few people who were able to pioneer major revivals in their lifetime. And I thank God for the honor of being used by God to do a bit of that. So I, what I am speaking about respectfully is not theory. I know what I am saying. And if you pay attention to these truths, I assure you that something will come upon you in this conference and you will run like the foxes of Samson in the name of Jesus Christ. There are four dimensions of encounters that I believe from Scripture every believer that intends to manifest the kingdom every believer that intends to do business with God in these last days you must contend for these dimensions of encounters they produce maturity and they produce balance in the life of the believer hallelujah very quickly I will run through them and I want you to please pay attention the words that we speak, they are spirit and life. It's not just an education. It's not just an intellectual communication. This is not just a theological dissertation. This is the ministry of the spirit. Hallelujah. Four encounters. I submit to you, let me tell you a little story. I'm a student of scripture. I study the Bible by the grace of God. But this teaching came to me by revelation. I was not reading any Bible. The Holy Ghost came to me and began to open me up that there are four dimensions of encounters and that I must teach the body of Christ this truth to help believers mature and really begin to prove the reality of the power of God. Can I tell you this? A generation is gradually getting tired of religion. A generation is gradually getting tired of spiritual propositions without the grace dimension to, de to deliver their validity. And technology has made it, people know that things can be proven. You can say this and there are statistics to prove it. It is that same hunger now. People have brought it to the church to say if you claim God is God, if he heals, if he lifts, if he blesses, I am sick and tired of theory. I want an experience that whose conviction will last my lifetime. And if we are unable to deliver to that degree, then sooner or later, many people will forget the name of the Lord. But may God forbid it, not in our lifetime. Are we blessed? Yes. Encounter.
encounters. Number one, the first supernatural encounter that every believer needs in this order to be relevant and to be able to host dimensions of God in your life to a territory to a generation is called an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God John chapter 3 the Bible says and verse 16 popular scripture says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the intent that whosoever believeth in him should not perish eternal damnation. The word perish there does not necessarily just mean die physically. Eternal damnation. But that we should have what the Bible calls zoe, the life of God. Everybody say encounter with Jesus. There are many people in church who have not met Jesus. There are many people around Christian circles who have truly not had an encounter with Jesus. You can be around the things of God. You can even be part of the move of God. But an encounter with Jesus is not corporate. Number one, it is a personal affair. Those days, well, in the South, yeah, I think it was student union and then in the north it was FCS they would ask you do you have a personal relationship with Jesus that word personal was the key word not have you been around church for a while a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus first John chapter 5 the epistle of John first John chapter 5 help us Holy Spirit first John chapter 5 we'll start from verse 11 1st John 5 and 11 this is the record that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son next verse please it says he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life period so if you say you are born again then that must have been that you have encountered the son of the living God, the savior of the world. Can I tell you this? We need by the grace of God to remind a generation again that there is no other name given unto man by which men can be saved. Believing a man of God does not give you salvation. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Believing a living church does not give you salvation. Believing an apostle, a prophet, following an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, as important as it is, you are only an effective follower. You are not saved. Are we together? According to the authority of scripture, the condition for being a partaker of the life of God is not proximity with the anointing. It's not proximity with church. It's a personal encounter with the son of the living God. You will think what I'm teaching is so basic and simple and everyone should know. Except for the fact that the day there is a day that this earth will be judged. And let me tell you, whoever does not have that encounter with the son of God, he says, I saw that the sea gave up its dead. Everyone gave up his dead and whosoever's name was not in the book of life was casted into the lake of fire that burned with sulfur and brimstone. This, he said, is the second death. And he said, right, for these things are faithful and true. I don't mean to make you afraid, but I tell you sincerely, one day this earth will wrap up. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. We establish this in the future. In, in, in the morning and it's not going to be in so distant future I am convinced personally from the authority of scripture because the one sign the Bible gives to characterize the coming of Christ is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all generations they don't have to receive it, it there just has to be a testament that they had it and the Bible says then the end will come An encounter with the son of the living God. John chapter 10 and verse 10 says the thief cometh not. That means you will never see the thief around any vicinity but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. 
and he said but I am come that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly so the first encounter you need that starts your journey your Christian experience more than church more than a pastor more than a man of God is an encounter with the son of the living God we are all sons of the living God but there is the son of the living God Jesus the Christ there is no other name given unto men by which we must be saved respectfully do you know that you can do a random selection around church and really ask people are you saved and you will be surprised how many people are not saved they are committed they are sincere they are not evil people but they are just not saved sincerity is not the condition to be with Jesus it is salvation Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved the formula is in the next verse with the heart man believes unto righteousness then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation hallelujah there are three things that you receive for having an encounter with the Son of the Living God. Please write it. According to the authority of Scripture, if and when you truly have an encounter with the Son of the Living God, there are three things that you receive. Number one, access to righteousness. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. These are fundamentals of the Christian faith that if not known, every other dimension of truth will be standing on a wrong foundation. Romans 5 and verse 17, please. Access to righteousness. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, it says much more, we, they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ righteousness great men like E.W. Kenyon who had been a great blessing to the body of Christ and still continue to bless the body of Christ even though they have long gone I think he defined one of my first definitions of righteousness came from his books the ability to stand before the father's presence without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt that's what he defined as righteousness even though today I would say righteousness is more than just a sense of being free righteousness is actually the nature of God without righteousness you cannot receive the way the condition to have the life of God is that you have righteousness equal to that of Jesus so before you receive the life of God you must receive righteousness Righteousness is what qualifies you to be a partaker of the life of God. It is impossible to have the life of God until you have righteousness. Are we blessed? The first thing we receive from having an, a genuine encounter with the Son of God is righteousness. The righteousness of the Son of the living God at work in me that I have received it. Number two, the second thing that we receive when we have an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God, is access to the life of God, what the Bible calls Zoe, the life of God. Zoe is more than eternal life. Please look up. There are different kinds of life. And some of you may have heard me teach that Zoe is not eternal life. Everybody has eternal life. The condition for eternal life really is not being born again. It's being born once you pass through the womb of a woman, you have eternal life. Whether in this earth or beyond this earth, you are still living. The life is eternal. When you get people saved, you say, where will you spend eternal life? Not will you. You are going to spend eternal life. The question is location, not the possibility. Are we together now? Remember Jesus, we are Bible students, isn't it? Remember Jesus was talking to, he was giving a parable about the rich man and Lazarus. 
Both of them had eternal life. It was just location. The man was still alive after this earth. So the life Jesus came to give us, I know that it was translated eternal life, but it's not really eternal life. It's called Zoe, the life of God. It's a quality of life, the very kind of life. Great men like Papa Hagin call it the God kind of life. Well, I respect and I believe them, but revelation is progressive. It's not the God kind. It is the very life of God. There are not many kinds. It is God's life given to men. Are we blessed? A superior kind of life. This is what I get when I encounter the Son of the living God. Now, because it is spiritual in nature, you may not appreciate it. We are sensory. So when things happen and you have a physical impact, usually you will believe it. But when you, when you receive of his life in what you call the salvation experience, usually you may not necessarily feel anything physical. So it may be difficult for you to believe that a translation and an exchange just happen in the spirit. But it is still the truth of scripture that anyone who encounters the Son of God has the life of God. Please say, I have the life of God. <laughs> Number three, what do you receive for having an encounter with the Son of God? Access to the grace of God. Hmm. Access to the grace of God. Access to the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 1, please, and verse 3. The grace of God is a powerful mystery. This is my definition of the grace of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. This is my definition of grace. Grace is more than just unmerited access. Grace is the generic name given to every spiritual blessing that is given to the believer routed through the office of the Christ. It's called grace. So anointing is grace. Wisdom is grace. Faith is grace. All spiritual blessings that have been given to the saints but can only be accessed through the office of the Christ is called grace. When you limit your understanding of grace to just um, unmerited access or being pardoned from iniquity by reason of being in Christ, it is very, very limiting. So when we have access to grace, it's more than just favor. Uh -uh. That's why the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And then the Bible says that, um, how, how does he put it? It says God is able to make all grace. I think I shared that the last time I was here. The grace of God. Unfortunately, and, and lovingly speaking, for most believers, our our understanding of grace just has to do with the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ and receiving it and then, and then that's all. But grace is more than that. Grace represents every spiritual blessing allocated for the victory of the saints, but it is only routed in Christ. An unbeliever cannot have grace, can have mercy, but not grace. Are we blessed? The grace of God only comes through the office. The administrator of the grace of God is Christ himself. Is God helping us now? So if you tell me you have encountered Jesus, I search for this. Notice my choice of words. Access to righteousness. Access to the life of God. Access to the grace of God. What does access mean? Potential. It does not mean experience. Access means that the door has been opened. But it is up to you to come into the experience of it. 
For instance, we have received the way the life of God. But Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness that is in their heart. So it is true that he that had the son had life, but because it is access, it takes a level of spiritual illumination to come into the experience of it. This is where faith is applicable. So it is by grace, but then through faith to become our experience. Are we blessed? Many believers continue to chant spiritual realities that the grace of God has provided. And sometimes we never get to walk into the experience of it because grace gives you access. And access is important, but that's not what you really need. What you need is an experience. Is God blessing us? Let's hurry up for the sake of time. Number two. I pray and trust that this is blessing your heart. Number two. The second encounter that you will need to be mighty with God in this earth and in this season is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please write it down. In this order, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Joshua Selman, saying, This destiny and this kingdom advance is not by might, is not by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. By my spirit, your destiny, your excelling ministry, business, family, advancement, the manifestation of the hand of God within a territory. Please hear me. The Bible says it is not by might. It is not by power. But it is by the Spirit of God. Whilst it is true that the Holy Spirit plays an active role in the revelation of Jesus. The Holy Spirit as one of the, the Godhead has a separate office that an individual can encounter. Please listen. The Holy Spirit is there to create conviction. Jesus was teaching and he said, I have many things to tell you, but he cannot bear them now. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Is that true? He will testify of me, he said. But the Holy Spirit, listen to me, as God has a separate office that you will need to encounter, the person and the office of the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 48 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 48. Did I get that right? Give me Isaiah 30 and verse 21. Isaiah 30 and verse 21. It says, thine ears shall hear a word from behind you saying, this is the way. If someone who speaks to you, walk ye in it and you will find rest. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. You will hear a voice saying, a voice. The same word is used in Genesis chapter 3. And they heard the Lord walking, the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. That voice is a person. And even though Jesus came and walked upon the earth, Jesus is the word. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God to the saints. Please understand this. Jesus Christ is the word, but the Holy Ghost represents the voice of God. This is what I'm trying to establish. It's very, very important you understand this. If you do not encounter the office and the person of the Holy Spirit, your hearing in this kingdom will have a problem. And your rest 
is predicated on your hearing. The person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When I started out with God, I used to watch a lot of Catherine Kuhlman's videos and Benny Hinn, and I would hear them cry and talk about the Holy Spirit, and I felt, it, it felt so strange. How could you talk about someone you don't see? How could you talk about someone who looks unseen? But the reality, the substance of what they were saying, it was so real, they would cry, they would sob. I knew they were not lying. I knew there was a dimension of reality that they were operating on. Catherine Kuhlman would cry on stage and say, he's my best friend. Don't offend my best friend. Pastor Benny will continue to shout and say, ah, oh, he's the Holy Spirit until I began my journey with God. And when I was introduced to the person and the office of the Holy Spirit, my life changed. I knew hmm, that he could take a weak person, my brothers and my sisters, when the Holy Spirit holds you, he can turn you into a sign and a wonder. Many have encountered the Son of the living God. They have the life of God. But they are unable to be effective in this Christian experience because you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit to believers? Number one, the Holy Ghost is the revealer of the Word of God. Please write it down. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. Sorry, I'm hurrying up because we're working with time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. But as it is written, the Bible declares, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Uh -huh. But God had revealed them. How? By the Spirit. That means if you do not have access to this spirit, you also do not have access to genuine revelation. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word. Please keep that scripture there. It says, for the spirit is given the exclusive ability to search all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 11. For no man... For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It says, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, to the end that we might know revelation, the things that are freely given to us from God. When you see men acting as though they outsource a dimension of knowledge from another realm, you are right. But the bringer of that revelation is the Spirit of God. That the Holy Spirit is able to fetch truths from the bowels of heaven and bring it to ordinary men and turn their lives to signs and wonders. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word. John chapter 16, when you read from verse 13, the Bible tells us, John 16 and verse 13, please give it to us, that how be it when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you. You see how complicated truth is. It's not enough to have access to truth. You must be guided because truth without guidance can still kill you. It's not only a lie that kills. Truth unguided can also destroy Did you ever learn that the truth too can kill? He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Are you seeing now? Here, this scripture is the reason why the Holy Spirit conceals his presence. The Holy Spirit, I believe, according to the authority of scripture, has a real form. But the reason why he conceals his form is because his assignment is to glorify Jesus. <laughs> Are we together? That he will not speak of himself and he will, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. In fact, oil does not anoint. 
Oil only anoints because someone anointed anointed it. I'm not against that. Don't, don't get me wrong. The Holy Spirit is not water. The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not smoke. These are just expressions of his person. The Holy Spirit is God. God in every way. God in every form. There is an office of the Holy Ghost. And hear me, dear people of God, this is a call to come into that level of encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. The revealer of the word. Number two, very quickly. What is the assignment? What does the encounter with the person and the, whole, the ministry of the Holy Spirit bring? He is the confirmer of the word. The Holy Spirit does not only reveal the word, he confirms the word. Isaiah 44 from verse 24, please, to 26. We're doing a little Bible study here. Isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 26. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretch forth the heavens alone, and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. 25. That frustrated the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. 26. Let's read together. That confirmed the word of his servant, and performed the counsel of his messengers. Hear me. The Holy Spirit is the dimension of the Trinity that is responsible for manifestation. You cannot desire manifestation and neglect his office. Every provision that the word of God makes available, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes it manifest. Very powerful. So when you say be healed in the name of Jesus, you have spoken that word by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is that active dimension of the Trinity whose power goes into that sick body and begins to make biological, spiritual adjustments until that person looks like what the word of God should be. He will not stop. For many years in the body of Christ, there has been a controversy between the limit of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. So we have people who say word and we have people who say spirit. Both of them are incomplete. I pray that God will answer that question in this short session. In the name of Jesus Christ, the ministry of the spirit as the confirmer of the word. Mark 16 and verse 20. Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. The Bible says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them when they preached and they said, This is what we've brought to you from heaven. The Holy Ghost was there with them. He is with you and shall be in you, walking to will and to do. Men of God, hear me. We need the Holy Spirit to walk close to us if we need real results. It is the Holy Spirit that has the ability to produce supernatural results. No man sustains the ability to produce results at God's dimension except assisted by the Holy Ghost. We're tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this We're tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more, gotta be more There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more it's gotta be more. The Holy Ghost is also the custodian of the anointing. Please write it down. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing. Mm. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord, he said, the Messianic prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, 
that spirit hath anointed me too. Then it begins to list everything that the anointing does. To preach, it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings. It takes more than understanding the message of salvation to preach. It takes the anointing. It takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and even the vengeance of our God. It takes the anointing to comfort people who mourn. It takes more than a sympathetic heart. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I have power, he says, by the Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power, not by my ability, by the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit who empowers men in this kingdom. We are all ordinary except for what he does in us. He reconfigures us by his power. And suddenly we cease to be normal. We cease to be ordinary. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus himself. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And unto the utmost part of the earth. You shall receive power. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing. Just because you are born again may not necessarily expose you to the anointing. It gives you access to that possibility. But you need an encounter with the person and the office of the Spirit. I do not know one man on earth who works notably in dimensions of the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit is strange to that individual. I am yet to find one. There is no man that works truly in the miraculous, that works truly in signs and wonders of all forms, not just in the fivefold ministry. You must be exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, and we'll stop here for the sake of time. The third encounter that you need if you must do exploits in this kingdom and manifest the reality of the kingdom is an encounter with the word of God. Hmm. An encounter with the word of God. Now please look up. An encounter with Jesus as the savior is different from an encounter with the word of God, the logos of God, a compendium of the mysteries, the secrets, the methodologies, and the principles of the kingdom. You must have an encounter with the word of God, the living logos of God. You can have an encounter with the son of God and you have Zoe, but spiritual ignorance will make you live a very fruitless Christian experience as though you were not saved. This is where the intelligence of the saints lie. Their encounter with the word of God. Please write this down. The word of God is a compendium of the mysteries, the secrets, the principles, and the methodologies of the kingdom. It's called the word of God. A compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 it says because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven John 1 principles the patterns the methodologies of God Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 Shiba let the word of Christ, he says, dwell in you richly in all wisdom. I wish I had time to walk this word. We can spend the whole night discussing this scripture. Look up, please. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. But he says, let it dwell in you in all wisdom. That means if the word of God dwells in you randomly, it will confuse you and lead you into error. The word of God must dwell in you in a way that it dwells in all wisdom. If all you have is just scriptures, you will misquote scriptures, you will get into trouble because you, the word of God is dwelling in you, but not in all wisdom. So it says, hey, 
While you study the Bible, while you cram the scriptures, make sure there is a sequential arrangement of truth so that the devil will not come and manipulate what you already have and destroy you with it. When Satan came to Jesus, it was, it is written that Jesus already had within him, but because the word of God, he was the embodiment of the word, dwelling in all wisdom. Are we blessed? Three things happen to you when you have an encounter with the word of God. Number one, understanding. The first miracle that happens in your life when you truly have an encounter with the logos of God is understanding. Luke chapter 9. From the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the God of all flesh. You're my God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. He's my King and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh, Yahweh. Luke chapter 19 and verse 42, please. Understanding. The first miracle we receive. Luke chapter 19 and verse 42. 19 and verse 42. Jesus began to weep over Jerusalem. And he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this your day, the things that belong to your peace, it says, but now they are hidden from you so that you cannot come into this experience. You are barren of understanding and so you do not have the peace that should come as a result of understanding. This is powerful. Understanding. We all need that miracle in our lives. Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. Luke 24 and verse 45. Read it please if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. Understanding is beyond education. Understanding is, is beyond the realm of intellectual prowess. It takes the ministry of the spirit to open your understanding to the word of God. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. This is the first miracle that happens to you. The second is faith. When you have an encounter with the logos of God, you receive faith. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Romans 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh. So faith is living. It can come to you. It comes when you hear the word of God. As I have an encounter with the word of God, I'm inviting faith to my life. Faith that commands victories. Faith that is responsible for exploits. The Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. And that faith comes only when I encounter the word of God. Romans chapter 4. I wish we had time, but let's see how far we can go. Romans 4 from verse 19. The Bible talks about the patriarch Abraham. It says, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Uh -huh. He staggered not at the promise of God. So there was something for him to hold on. The word of God is an anchor. You can hold on to it. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore... It was imputed unto him for righteousness. Stability is the next thing that you receive. Understanding, faith, 
and then stability. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. He says, be steadfast. He says, be unmovable. That means when you vacillate in this kingdom, is proof that your faith is not stable. Your faith is not alive and the word of God is not at work in you. If God gives you a word, you can hold on to that word. And as life beats left, right and center, you say, he told me that in the name of Jesus, my church will thrive in this city. He told me that in the name of Jesus, when men say there is a casting down for me, there is a lifting up. It is what God said that keeps you. It is what God said that keeps you. What did he tell you? Hold on to it. Isaiah 33 and verse 6 tells us that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. When you find a very stable Christian, he has been fortified by the wisdom and the knowledge of Scripture. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that you will cultivate such a hunger for an encounter with the Word of God. Can I be sincere with you? Thank God for all the platforms that are available for believers to at least have an encounter with the word of God but you cannot give the word 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and expect a lifetime of result and stability. No sir. There is a lot to know about the word of God. There are keys of the kingdom not a key. The truths of the kingdom that make for the victory of the saints are finite but there are many. It's a body of spiritual knowledge called marvelous light. They are finite but they are not just two or three or four. You will need to know the principles that make for speed, restoration. You will need to know the principles that make for increase. You will need to know the principles that make for sustainability. You will need to know the principles that are responsible for your warfare and your dominion. You will need to know the principles that are responsible for your health and your wellness. It takes time to learn those things. I found your word and I did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. You must cultivate passion for the word. Just opening the Bible in the name of Jesus and you open it and just read something. Um, then he put their eyes on Zedekiah and the king of Babylon and close it. You won't grow that way. You will never ever grow that way. It takes intention. You need to give the word time. Let me respectfully encourage us, servants of the living God, it takes time. There are treasures that are hidden here, but it will take patience to see it. Do you know that, look up please, when Mary of Magdala, when Jesus rose again, different people came and they could not see him, but the woman stayed there. She was gazing at the resurrected word. She stayed there until she suddenly saw a man and she said, Rabboni, he said, do not touch me. It was her staying that made her to see. The remaining disciples came in a hurry and they went back. We've not seen him. But the woman said, I'm not going anywhere. I will stay. There are times you will stay on one verse for days. You want to leave it and God says the next level of your ministry is in that scripture. Just keep looking. Just keep looking. And suddenly, he will isolate from all the, the scriptures and just bring out three words from that scripture. That becomes the next level of your lifting. Please don't run when you have not seen. Run only when you have seen from scripture. An encounter with the word of God. This is 2021. What have you seen? What have you seen for your health? What have you seen for your lifting? What have you seen for your destiny? We're about to pray. Parusali Kataria. An encounter with the son of the living God. Giving me access to righteousness. Access to the life of God. And access to the riches of the kingdom. We call it grace. Then an encounter with the spirit of the living God. 
access to direction, access to spiritual illumination, becoming for me the confirmer of the word, the revealer of the word, the custodian of the anointing of the spirit. And then an encounter with the logos of God, very powerful, giving me understanding that brings faith, that also brings stability. This is how it starts. It starts from understanding. Then faith is built. And on the strength of faith, I can find stability in my life. Are we together? We'll leave the last encounter for another time. But can we take a few minutes to pray? Please rise up on your feet. I'd like you to pray these dimensions in your life. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, here at Wafbeck 2021, I cry for an encounter by the Spirit of the Living God. An encounter with the Son of the Living God. An encounter with the Spirit of all grace. An encounter with the Logos of God. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Your exploit this year in ministry, in your family, in your career, the manifestation of the kingdom, the advancement of the kingdom is predicated on these encounters. Lift your voice for a minute or two and call upon the God of heaven. I declare by the spirit of the living God, you are praying now, you are praying now, an encounter with the son of the living God, an encounter with the son of the living God, I have the life of God in the name of Jesus, the life that is superior to the limitations of men, I declare by the spirit of God, it's not a theoretical reality, I am a possessor of the life of God here and now. I encounter the spirit of all grace in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. You are praying. The spirit of all grace. The revealer. The revealer of the word of God. The strengthener. My advocate. I expose myself to the fullness of his ministry. Even in this season. Now you pray and cry for an encounter with the word of God, the logos of God, bringing me spiritual illumination, access to light, the light that produces victory. The entrance of my word, the Bible declares, give it light and understanding to the simple. The word of God producing faith the faith that moves mountains, the faith that can change the impossible, bringing stability to my Christian experience so that I am fruitful in every good work. Finally, I'd like you to pray. Father, the grace to stay with your word until an encounter is established in my life. The staying power, the grace to stay with the word, the grace to stay with the word, the patience to stay with the word.
limitless love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry.
presence, to gaze at your word, to look into the perfect law of liberty, to search the scriptures, to hear your voice, because I know all that matters is here. All that matters is right here.
Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.